Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. Can everybody hear us? Okay, so it's two o'clock and it's time to start our today's event. And as you can see, our theme for today is LinkedIn. So let's learn LinkedIn. And my name is Mika Mertanen, and on behalf of Carrier Services, welcome to you all to this LinkedIn event. Uh, before I give stage to Riikka, who is here to us to tell you about LinkedIn a bit more, uh, there's a few things about the logistics of today. So the first one, first one is that we're going to start with the training session first, and that's going to be like one, one and a half hour. And after that, most of you have signed up for the workshop also. But the workshop section won't be in this room, so we're going to have to move to another space after this uh, training session. So we're going to go through the glass doors and th then to the left, and then there's the room. And there's 30 people who can attend the workshop section, but there's been a few cancellations in the last few days, so we'll see if everybody can still attend if you haven't signed up or gotten the confirmation email for the workshop. And uh, <coughs> yes, I think that's about it. So the space for the workshop is K213, and we'll be here to guide you there so you can see, and we'll check the names at the door who have attended to the workshop. But without further ado, Rika, please begin. Thank you very much, Mika. And good afternoon from my behalf as well. My name is Rika Annika Keskitalo, and I'm here today to teach you some secrets of LinkedIn and what you can do already during the studies. So who, how many of you already has LinkedIn profile? That's great. And it's also great that you have your uh, laps laptops with you so you can check all the b things already during now. So a little bit about the presentation structure. I will tell you a little bit first about uh, how LinkedIn is a platform, as a social media platform. And then I will go through a bit about uh, networking, because it is the most important thing what you can do with LinkedIn is networking. And it is the most important, uh, at least one of the most important skills that you can have for the future work life. After that, I will go through what you should have in your profile, what are the most important points that you have to keep in mind. And then the secrets of a good post. And then after you have all the ideas of what you should do or what you should keep in mind, then a bit how you can track it. And then after that one and a half hours, we will have uh, the workshop where I can answer your questions and give you some personal advice what exactly you should write or do on your LinkedIn. But a little bit more about that later. So a little bit about my story. My story starts on when the, on my third year of my studies of international business. And that time I had no idea what I'm gonna do. But then I decided that uh, I need to start to uh, figure it out. And I started networking. I started to try things out. What should I do? I volunteered for startup events. I volunteered for a different kind of stuff. And it got me, get me more networks, experience. And also through that, I met Tom Leine. And now I'm working for Tom Leine who taught me a lot about LinkedIn and personal branding, and that is exactly why I'm here now. So I didn't have any idea on like, on like last years of my studies what I'm gonna do, but it didn't uh, restrict me to reach the point where I am now. So I'm a freelancer, uh, entrepreneur, and I, and I, I train 
not anymore study, but I train personal branding and social media. What people can do with social media to accelerate their work life. So you can add me on LinkedIn or and with that name you can find me from anywhere from social media channels. I don't have a YouTube channel myself but or a SoundCloud but all the Instagram and Twitter and so on. And also a bit about uh, my personal brand as uh, I use my whole name, not only my first name and last name, but the whole one because I have uh, um, there's a, another Riika Keskitalo in Finland and uh, she has been quite active as well. So when you Google Riika Keskitalo, you can find someone from Espo who is not me. So I wanted to make differentiate myself. So when people like I use in official locations Riika Annika Keskitalo. So when people Google me, they can find uh, things about me, not about some other one. And that is also one thing that you should look onto. What is found when you Google yourself? Go, uh, but it, uh, you should do it on incognito mode or with someone else's um, browser. What do you find there when you Google yourself? Is there your social media channels? Is there your, like something that you wrote on uh, primary school? Is there like some awkward things or something that you would want someone see with who you worked? Because so many times when I have been calling to someone, having an interview or whatever work related, they have Googled me already when they are on the phone with me. So then I also like, I want to make sure that they find the professional stuff about me. So that is one very good reason why you should take care of your LinkedIn profile. Because usually that is one that is scoring quite high on your Google results. So I already mentioned a bit about uh, why LinkedIn is important. It's important establishing your personal professional brand. It may have like a personal brand may have a little bit um, um, nasty connotation that but I'm not a brand but yes everyone has a personal brand because it is your reputation, your story. It's more than just your name and your title or your experience. Your story tells what you can do about your persona, what you bring to the workplace. So a bit more about that, how you can take care of your personal brand. But LinkedIn is all about networks. It's all about um, connecting with people maintaining the relationships. When you are out there and uh, getting some business card or handing yours, then you might have the, like a huge pile of them somewhere in the end of your desk or cupboard or somewhere. And then you remember that, oh, I remember now I, like there's this one person who I want to contact because he or she was working in the company that I want to work to. But then, when you find the business card from the pile and you call the number, it says that uh, the number is not anymore working, it's not operating. Because people change jobs, they change phone numbers, they change like, even their names if they get married or something. But in LinkedIn, if you have these connections, you can just put in the, on the search and it shows you and it also updates itself. You can always contact people from LinkedIn. And also, it's so much easier to like, send a message in LinkedIn to the people you, you are connected with 
than just like uh, finding the email from somewhere in the Google. So it's like updating, it's self-updating CRM, CRM of your own. You can write there your, on your LinkedIn profile all your experience more in detail than in just like CV. So people who are interested in you in like professional wise, they can dig more about like uh, what you can do and you can write like um, for, your, for your experience where you have been working, how long, but also with your own words, what you learned from there. What, what were the tasks exactly, what did you do? And usually in CV, there's no space for that. And then there is summary. Summary is like your cover letter. And uh, also that one, you can't fit in to one page CV or two page CV if you have a long, lot of experience. Also, from LinkedIn, you can find jobs. There is a, like its own page for job posting, for open job positions. And you can apply even with your CV, like a LinkedIn profile. How convenient, like you don't have to like uh, type in every like form, but you can just apply your own LinkedIn profile. So again, one good reason to keep it on point. And because LinkedIn is only for professional usage, it's like, it's so much, uh, networking there is so much more open. You don't really need to be friends with someone, unlike in Google, and you can connect with people who you don't know beforehand, which is not like really much the case in like, for example, in Facebook. And people are really, like people who are active there, they are really wanting to help people. They are really wanting to expand their network. It's the, like the conversations there are so much that you can learn from them. It's not about, uh, because in social media there's a conversation, sometimes are really, really not nice and the people are talking really nasty things about each other, but uh, in LinkedIn, people are mostly positive and they are really wanting to help others rather than putting them down. So there's a few points about why LinkedIn is it's a good platform for your professional de development. But who uses LinkedIn? Globally, there's uh, millions, over 500 million users. In Finland, about a little bit more than one million. So, and also in Nordic level, as in many other cases, Finland is a bit like behind, but uh, the number is growing rapidly. And especially in Helsinki area, it is very widely used. So that's why you should also use it. Like in, Denmark, all the, of all the population, 42% have LinkedIn profile. So it's, they are using it really. They are, people are, it's more popular there than Facebook. Also same in um, Norway and Sweden, they, the numbers are I increasing all the time, but Finland is like there taking, taking actions as well. LinkedIn is not only about uh, job hunting, it is uh, also people do really sales there, especially B2B sales. They establish their professional brand because there you can show about your network, who you know, and also you can take part in the conversation where you can uh, say, show that I have something to say. You can produce your own content, give some tips to show that you really know what you're talking about.
And many times people ask me like, uh, but isn't it only about uh, recruiting and isn't it only about uh, IT people? That is a like, kind of idea what people usually have about LinkedIn, but there's an like, increasing amount of uh, researchers and uh, healthcare. Healthcare industry is one of the rapidly growing industries. So most of the, like if you are interested in getting a job with a good salary, there is a reason why you should have your LinkedIn profile updated. And this is how it looked like the front page of LinkedIn when you are there. So it looks like pretty much the same as in Facebook. There is the feed. You can post there, start a post. But you can also write articles. The articles don't have that good visibility, but it is super good place to showcase that uh, what is your field of expertise and what is your that you, what you know. For example, I have been writing articles, sorry it's in Finnish, but about uh, how to create content on LinkedIn and what are the basics of personal branding. So if you're studying Finnish or you know the language, you can go and check them. There's a bit more detailed and written exact steps how you can boost your LinkedIn or personal brand. And then there's different uh, stages, like uh, different tabs. Ap apparently the home that has the feed, network, where you can check, like uh, search for the connections in your network. Jobs, where you can apply for jobs, search for jobs and see what is out there. And there is, companies are really posting there, like especially in Helsinki area. They are looking for job applicants from LinkedIn and trainees, trainees, internship, interns. And I'm gonna show you later how it works. And then there's messaging. Very low, like a very easy way to connect with people, basically with anyone. And here is like a one person, Sunny Leino, who you should check out. He is the social selling mastermind in Finland. And he is also, he knows about the networking. He has some, so check what he is doing the content that he is creating and connect with him as well. Like that's what I did. I had some question about social selling. So then I checked fr him from LinkedIn, put like connect and send a message him, like a story uh, telling about like who I am and what kind of problem I have. I mean, hey, can you help me? Maybe he doesn't have time to help me or like a given answer about anything, but at least I tried. But he answered me and then we had a short, short conversation like and ending with the words, if there's anything you need, I'm here, just throw me a message. Easy way, you don't need to like uh, Google any, any phone numbers or emails and then uh, Although he doesn't know me beforehand, he can know that he can check my profile and get an idea. So he checked my profile and saw that I'm working with Tom Laine. And he was saying like, oh yeah, well, say hi to Tom for me. Because they have been working together. And if I just like would have uh, sent an email, he would have never thought, like knew that I'm working with Tom Laine. So then his posts are on my feed and because LinkedIn is so much about 
these networks and recommendations and because they want the LinkedIn algorithm wants to show us things that are interesting and quality content they are always stating there like who were commenting also this who were active on this uh, on this post and why it is on my feed So besides on that, what is uh, composing my feed? LinkedIn is also using hashtags. So in here, I can pick the hashtags that are most interesting for me. So there is, for example, social media, sustainability, and what of Igotus, interaction or communications. And the, I have a long list because there's like so many different things I'm interested and I can check what other outside my network, what they are talking about, about the topic. But what it means about being on my network and being outside my network. So in LinkedIn, there's a person, like you, the user. And then the first level of connections, they are your direct connections. They are the people who you clicked the connect button and then they responded it. They are the ones who you know and they are the ones who yeah, are you are in contact with. From your work, from hobbies, from events, from conversations that you have had on LinkedIn. And you can always send them a message for free. You can see all their information they want to share and their posts come to your feed. But then on the second level, they are your friends, friends, connections of your connections. They're posts come to your feed, but you can't see everything about them and you can't send them a free message. And that is, uh, that is already quite a big group because it's like uh, if you have, for example, thousand connections and then all your connections have thousand. So it's already like a thousand square. So there's a lot of people. And that is where it's usually the most interesting people for you. People who your connections can recommend you, where all the possibilities, new opportunities are. And then their connections are on the level three. You can't really see everything from what they are doing they are rarely coming to your feed. It's like a, a bit far away. So most likely those are not so interesting for you, at least not yet. That's the structure of the networks. So who you should connect with? Like I said, people from you, like uh, who you know personally, If you don't know each other here, get to know the people as I do or another table, connect with them, widen your network by people who you meet in person. But you can add everyone who you have met on like hobbies or some events at school, at work. So it's like a Networking in LinkedIn is so much more open than in any other social media channel. But you can also add people who you have never met yet. For example, if you find an interesting conversation from LinkedIn, or like um, if you know some interesting influencer that you want to get connect, con in contact with, you can just like send them connect with a note. 
and the, because it is the purpose of LinkedIn to get connected with people. And then after you have had this connection, you can uh, have like private conversation with them and then after that meet them in person. Like I am in JCI and then I wanted to broaden my network and use this uh, network of JCI. So I put on LinkedIn search JCI and everyone who was who put JCI in on their profile I got there as a result. So I was like uh, picking them and uh, connecting with them like hey I'm also JCI and I would love to have you on my connections so maybe we can later on help each other. And then one of them was organizing an event in Oulu where I was living back then. And then she needed my expertise about social media and content production. And then we started to talk, we had a meeting and then I was uh, working for her, for this project. <coughs> so that's how you can get a job from LinkedIn. Just broadening by your, your networks. The networks are also important for your visibility. The wider network you have, the more visibility LinkedIn gives you. It also suggests you for other people with who you have uh, similar connections. And also your posts, they show to more people the bigger network you have. How many connections you have on your LinkedIn? Does anyone dare to say? I have something around like 1,000. And then there is, well, when I was like uh, finishing my studies, there was maybe like one, 130 or something, which is pretty much the average of Finnish people, 100, 200 connections. But I highly recommend you to increase it to 500 as like soon as possible because it looks more professional <coughs> that you really put effort into networking. You really put effort on your online presence, your personal brand when you have their 500 plus in your profile. Because it shows the exact number of your connections until 500. There was one expert in US who said that uh, I don't even accept anyone with less than uh, 500 connections because it must be a fake profile. Like if someone is really doing business and they have less than 500 connections, it must like, it just must be not be true. But that was of course in US. They have a lot more people there, like one point, but the networking level over there is so well on different level. So it's okay if you don't, if you have like a, a lot less, but uh, try to increase it on to 500. It's okay to add people who are not, who you haven't met, but send a note for them because it is, uh, if you have just like a random list of uh, random people on your connection list, it's not really giving the value that it could. I could actually make it like a bigger number, but it doesn't mean that the quality of my profile will be the same. 
that's my one of my main concerns because that's what I saw happening on Facebook and other platforms. You start adding more people and then it kind of deviates from the purpose of the actual page. Yeah, of course you should connect with people who you're interested in. But it doesn't mean that it has to be only inside uh, the, um, the industry you're working with. I think that is the good point in LinkedIn, that you can connect with people outside of your industry. Because um, you never know who, who might be the one who has the lead for your next opportunity. Because they might recommend you to someone they know although this uh, who, who is recommending is not even in your industry, but he, just like, he or she just happened to like you or the way you work and uh, happen to know right people. So that's why it's important to start networking when you don't yet need it, because you never know who's gonna, who's gonna help you in the future. And the network is really like a safety net, for like a professional safety net. Because the work life is going to be even more and more unstable and you might uh, get fired from your job or then there might be an AI taking over your position and then like, how, like uh, from the reason or another gets resigned and then you are, when you are looking for the next job, your network can help you. And yeah, of course, it's not like a, not connecting with anyone, not only with random people, but people who you find interesting, but it doesn't need to be only on uh, your industry. And it shows also, of course, if you are in highly net, like widely networked in your own industry, it's very good. That is also one thing that when, uh, uh, if you are, for example, interested in the startup scene in Helsinki, and then you net, uh, widen your network inside the startup scene, and then people see that, okay, like uh, this person knows all the important people from the startup scene, and then he or she might be really interested in this and putting effort and knowing what he or she is doing. So then it uh, shows that it's also supporting your personal brand. But having also networks outside is showing that uh, you take the networking really seriously. Of course, like if we, you ha don't have any interests to Australia, it's good also not to connect with people in Australia. But when you are connecting, add a note because there's uh, so much like these random uh, connection requests that, okay, like uh, I don't even know this person, but uh, he is she or she is connecting me. But if you just, uh, either you click connect or ignore, you're gonna forget about it. You're gonna forget about this person. But if you add a note, like, okay, hey, I found you from here, uh, or we met in this event, May we connect and then add a bit about yourself, what you do, your punchline, whatever, that uh, like um, create some kind of idea like who you are. So then the networking has something like really beneficial. So I took like a couple of uh, examples of different uh, notes that uh, I got like some I came across your profile and I really like it. Would be happy to have you on my network, okay? It's nice, it makes me feel nice that someone uh, wants to connect me because they found my profile, but then again, I have no idea what she, she's doing. And then I have been in many different events and I have been connecting with people who I met there, like whose business cards I got or who I was uh, like having conversation. For example, I was in Oslo in one uh, Catapult Future Fest and I was attending one workshop. So I sent uh, a message from, for Bjorn 
like, hey, it was really nice to meet you, and uh, should, shall we connect? And also, I made uh, Richard from Denmark in Oulu, and then he was sending me a message like, hey, it was great to see you. Until the next time. So it's nice. It, it's creating this uh, after meeting someone, another memory of you when you are connected on LinkedIn. So, and that is supporting your personal brand because make people remember you. So in LinkedIn, of course, you cannot just like, a, of course you can, but it's uh, more profitable the time that you invest in LinkedIn if you know what you are doing, if you know the direction you are going to. So the first step is to set your goals. Do you want to establish your personal brand? Do you want to widen your networks? Do you want to get a job? Are you looking for an internship place? Whatever. But clarify it to you, like, what do you want to have? What do you want to do there? And then establish your networks. Like I have been talking about this importance of networks. And then after that also, be active. Stay active there. And there's different stages of being active. The first one is just to have updated profile. Because then when people see that, okay, this person has been updating their profile, they know they, they I can connect with them, I can contact with them. They are, they are looking for something perhaps. And especially if you're looking for something, a job or internship place, put it on your profile exactly with name, words looking for either new opportunities, internship place, trainee place, postgraduate placement, looking for a job. Whatever it is, remember the use looking for phrase because that is what recruiters are using. Not open for opportunities, but looking for. The second stage is like really taking the advantage of your networks or like networking and maintaining it, being like in contact with them. And then taking part in the conversations because there's a lot of hot topics discussed in LinkedIn. Like in Twitter, but with more space to express your opinions. And then when you take part in the conversation, you might get involved wi with influencers, important people in the industry. So it is very widely, like a really, I recommend you to do that. And you also then know how people are acting in LinkedIn, how they are, what is the so-called like etiquette in LinkedIn. And then when you get you into the, this etiquette in LinkedIn, you have more idea what you should post, how you should write, so you have more confidence for that. LinkedIn has also a lot of different groups where you can be active. Basically every industry has groups where you can uh, look onto. There's some post, uh, groups that are concentrated on pairing uh, jobs, and I'm gonna show three biggest ones in Finland in the end of this uh, presentation. So it's not that hard to be active on LinkedIn. The first step is to have updated profile. And what are the ingredients of that? When you check someone's profile, first thing before you read anything, you have an idea of this person based on the pictures. So I have this uh, profile picture in all my 
a social media channel on my CV. And I'm not anymore blonde, so I'm thinking that I need to change it. But it's still, it shows that it is me. It shows my face. It is, uh, I haven't been changing that much from that picture. Like uh, not gained like 20 kilos of weight or it's two years, one year old, two years old. And there's only me. There's not uh, like five other people that you have to think about, okay, who is this person? And that, that I am not in on a holiday or doing my, or drinking or anything. It is me, it is professional me. And another thing that is visual on this is the cover photo. Because people absorb information a lot visually before reading anything. So take advantage of your cover photo. I have put there three different photos where I have been working uh, in uh, taking photos in Tavastia and being on a startup event in uh, Estonia and uh, interviewing uh, a person in uh, China. Of course, you can't say about like uh, where I have been in these photos, but they still get a, give an idea that I have been doing uh, different things. So they get already an idea what I am doing before reading my profile. So put something that uh, creates, um, tells about uh, your persona or what you are, or your industry where you are working. Like for example, Tom Laine doesn't have any pictures on his cover photo, but he has put there his punchline with what he is doing and his logo. So there's some, do some benchmarking on your industry, what people are putting there on the cover photo to get some ideas what you should do. So that's about the visual part, but about the text. The most important, of course, is your name. Keep it right. Some people add some emojis. And if you are a person who uses a lot of emojis, you can put also some emoji that uh, tells about what you are doing. A friend of mine is um, own, like, yeah, he owns a football team. So he has their uh, football in the end of his name. Some people have stars. For example, Pipsa Aro has, who is like uh, doing uh, LinkedIn and uh, CV training and coaching, has a unicorn. But I just have my whole name. The second important part, written part in the profile is the headline. Because that is something that is read like that is shown there also uh, when you're having conversation with someone. So make sure that these, this line, these lines over there tell about uh, who you are and what you do. If you are a student, you can write there a student, but if you are about to graduate, I would recommend you to not put student there because it is uh, giving them an idea that okay, this person is student, but if you are looking for a placement after your graduation, I would put there like a more like fresh graduate or like a st stating that you are a student somewhere lower. Because when you're thinking about your personal brand, when you are modifying it, when you are writing something, think about who you are tomorrow and write it from that point of view, not about from yesterday. Don't think about too much about what you have done. Or like, of course you, like, because it gets you the experience, but don't think about uh, what you, ha only about what you have done. Because then it's not taking you forward, it's taking you backwards. So in the header, put, put things that you want to uh, resonate, um, that people want to remember you of. 
So I have their free freelancer and future of work because I believe that these things are the more and more people are doing freelancing in the future. So these are things that, that I am interested in and I want to talk about. And uh, I do personal branding and uh, social media as a trainer, as a coach, as a consultant. But I have only coached there because that is what I wish to do more, like for one-to-one -one coaching. I'm content producer and I am also JGI. And I do, and LinkedIn is one of my like, um, main specialities. So that's why I have chosen these words to my LinkedIn profile. And then this is the first lines of summary. So this uh, picture or this screen should be so interesting that people click on show more to show the summary. And the first image of your, like the first screen of your profile and the summary are usually the ones that are read. So put effort in that. If these two things are not interesting enough, no one's gonna check your experience. So these are the things that you should emphasize. I have put there in the, in the first line uh, my contact details and my other social media channels where you can find me. I'm not really that active on Facebook, but you can also find me on Facebook with my name. So that's why I haven't put it there. But Instagram and uh, occasionally Twitter are my favorite social media channel. And of course, my email. Because I know that if someone wants to contact me, they can do it like right away. They can find it, the way to do it. And uh, of course, there's like uh, this button like uh, your, my contact information, but people are super lazy. If they can't see it right away, if it's a, a hidden somewhere with one button, it equals non-existent. So remember to, when you are writing your summary that you have 200 marks to use and use them all. Because this is basically your cover letter. Create, like, um, make the reader interested of you, what you can do. And this is one example what you can put there and how you can structure it. But these are mainly the ingredients that you should have there. Your contact details, the punchline, summary of you, like what you are, what you know, what you, who you are in one line. In the workshop session, we're gonna go through how to find your punchline. And then list your main competencies or experience. What is your offering? What you can offer? If you are operating in some uh, other country with other language, for example, in Finland, in Finnish, or in Germany, in uh, German, right there in your own language, but keep it in English because 90% of searches are done in English. And of course, most of the people know English, so it is, your audience is wider. But in Finnish, there's not so much people using that, even in fin, like, even user, Finnish users of LinkedIn. If you have already from your privacy settings uh, set your email address to be visible for anyone on LinkedIn, do you still recommend uh, us to put it on, on your profile? Yes, I still advise to put it on the profile because it's, it shows that the you want to be contacted. Okay. Because you are making it as easy as possible for people to contact you 
it, uh, it's also that, uh, yeah, it's like a psychological thing as well that, okay, please contact me. This is my like uh, email or you can connect me this way. Okay, so it's thanks. recommendable. Thanks. And in the end of the summary, you can uh, add some media links and uh, other like uh, attachment. So if you have uh, your portfolio, your website, or anything that is telling about you, professional, you put it there. So I have there a PDF file that says uh, my offering for trainings, uh, mine and Tom's, and then there's an article that tells about me as a freelancer, and then there's my website. And you can add there uh, six of them. So it still looks nice. So take, a, take the advantage out of that. So the checklist, what to remember on profile. Clear and recognizable uh, profile picture. Interesting cover photo that's tel telling about you, making the profile looks nice. And the uh, headline with three to five keywords that you want to resonate with, that, uh, that resonates with you and your personal brand. And optimize your summary and with uh, remember the SEO. So when you find these three to five keywords that you want to put on your headline, you can also do some research that uh, what you can find uh, from LinkedIn with these keywords. Do you, do you want to be found a bit uh, like with these people over there? Like, and yeah, so you can do some research what you can uh, find from Google, like uh, LinkedIn with a keyword. And don't put just a uh, don't just put there your title. If you are, for example, project manager, because that is the most common title in LinkedIn, project manager. Of course, you can put it there if you're really good at what you do, but put there something else because, because you can modify your profile, your headline from there. And when you have found these three to five keywords that you want to, to, like, uh, to strengthen your personal brand, use them also in your summary. Because the whole profile of LinkedIn is, is as a, like a search engine optimized. So if you use the keywords also in your summary and your experience, then you rank high on LinkedIn results. And increase the number of your network to 500 as soon as you can, because it uh, affects your visibility. And remember to use English. So algorithm of LinkedIn is uh, pretty predictable when compared to other social media channels. So I'm going to tell you tips how to rank high, like uh, get visibility for your post. Of course, composing a post starts from defining the topic. What is interesting for you, what you know about, and what is your personal brand. What is like, what do you want to other people to read under your name? And LinkedIn really favors posts that are totally text-based. So no photos, no videos. Like earlier it was really strict that only, only uh, only posts with text were visible, but nowadays it's a bit more 
friendly for photos and videos as well. But still, if you want to have the highest visibility for your post, use only text. And you can use 1,300 marks on your post. So if you have, for example, a blog post you can, uh, that you want to share, you can refer a bit about it in the post and then put the po blog post link to the comment. Because algorithm wants people to stay in LinkedIn. They don't want uh, people to get out of the platform. So that's why if the algorithm sees that there is an external link in your profile, uh, in your post, it decreases its visibility. So put the links and the comments, so, and that's what you can see so really much on LinkedIn. Like people are posting things and there's always this link in the comments, link in the comments, link can be found in the comments, and there is a reason for that. It's because they want to have higher visibility. And what is really important as well is the activity. LinkedIn favors good content that generates conversation. So if people are leaving comments to your post, especially during the first two hours, the algorithm states that oh, this is a good post, let's, let's give it more visibility. So if you post, like a, the first comment is yours right away after posting that, hey, this is, this is the link, the algorithm thinks that, whoa, there was already one comment, this is, must be really interesting. So the algorithm doesn't separate uh, your comments and others' comments. So remember to be active on your own post and try to generate some conversation as much as you can. And here's one example of a good post, although it has a picture, but it creates an idea because the, the woman there is talking about the event that they made. So now, they, now it's showing a bit about uh, how the event looked like. But it has clear structure, which is very important to cut it down to paragraphs of one or two sentences which is also really important in summary because in we when we look at the text and if it has like a, it's only one big text without any paragraphs we have an idea that ah this is really long text this, this is like an article i'm not i don't have time to look at this i don't have time to read this so we're going to skip it but if it's like has the cl clear structure showing what is uh, it's really easy to skim then we are more likely to read it and LinkedIn is more likely to give more visibility. And also use hashtags, relevant hashtags, so other people can find them as well. And LinkedIn is nowadays encouraging you to use hashtags. So if you don't know what to put, they, like uh, the platform gives you recommendations, what kind of hashtags you should use. And then, like in Facebook and like in Twitter, you should tag a person who is relevant to this. The bigger the network of the people you tag, the better. So then, for example, Tom Line has, a, like, because he has like a network of 30,000 people, he's been tagged to many of posts so the post can get more visibility. But, okay, that, that is also one way to do it, but rather, rather tag people who are really relevant to the post or who are relevant to the topic, so they can, they can interact in your post. Which is exactly the biggest reason why you should be adding people to the post that they can, uh, the people know who is uh, 
who is relevant to this. You are not the only person who is working on this or who is like, and you have the networks and you know how to use them. So that's a good way to also increase the visibility and link internally inside the platform. And in the end, put some call to action, whether, whether it was uh, like, like, for example, there's people who say always in the end of their post that uh, if, my, uh, if my topics resonate with you, click connect. So the call, call, call to action is connect. And then there is some people who say always ask for opinion or they ask like uh, try to provoke somehow conversation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's uh, better to have there than not to have. Very good way is to ask for recommendations for to something or ask for advice. So when you are composing your post, you can think about uh, giving a tip of something that you have, uh, something that you know about the industry, because it's always good to share your knowledge. Network is all about giving and getting. So it's not only about like, okay, what the network, the network can do for me, but what I can do for them. So give some kind of tip or you can ask for advice because yes, people want to share their knowledge. They want to help other people. So if you ask for an advice, people are more likely to be there. Like, hey, I know this, I know this, I can advise you. Or then you can yeah, share some recommendations. Just one question. I'm not sure if you already mentioned this, but since the first one and two hours are the most important ones, is there like a certain time of the day or maybe a w certain weekday that is the most like uh, effective way to post on LinkedIn? Yes, good question. Thank you for that. From the good time to post is basically from Monday to Thursday during the morning coffee time or afternoon coffee time. But not uh, in the evening, although people are quite uh, active in, in the evenings, but if you create a new post in the evening, then it, uh, it's already like, uh, most likely the, the conversation will continue in the morning, which is already, like, like there's so many hours unused. So in the morning or afternoon coffee time or lunch time, they are the best times to post. And what is interesting as well when people are active on LinkedIn is Sunday evening. So Sunday is also a good day to post. Apparently people are like uh, getting their minds already on the work stuff and uh, what is the softest way to do it than going to scroll LinkedIn. So the checklist for the good post. Text-based, good structure, links to comments, aim for early activity. So it is easy way to do is that you agree with your friends or colleagues or whoever that, hey, now I posted this go there and comment, go there and like it, go there and share it. Because, and especially commenting, because the algorithm is really much in favor of comments, not really much likes. So if you, if you are getting only likes, well, people are, are sharing likes, it's like uh, clicks, but the comments are not that easy to get, so that's why exactly ask for comments and sharing. Sharing has the biggest importance for the visibility. So use hashtags, tag people, and call to action. And remember be, to be active as well yourself. 
So after you have had these all ideas, like uh, what you should do to your profile, how to create some uh, posts, how to track it, how to track if it's useful, really, what you are doing, what is it really, like, is it really profitable, the effort you are putting in? So yes, LinkedIn is you showing you some numbers. There's the dashboard on, on your home page, or um, I mean your profile page, that is showing only for you. And it shows you who has been visiting your profile. And uh, who has been uh, checking your article or posts. And also in how many searches you have appeared. Yeah, so the profile views. There's always the peak if I have had something happening, for example, uh, training, or if I have been attending to some event, there's always the peak when I say to people that, hey, find me on LinkedIn, look on me LinkedIn, and then there's peak. But I cannot see everyone who has been on link, like uh, checking my profile, because I don't have premium. And I have to say that it's useless to pay 50 euros per month for the premium s service. So LinkedIn is always trying to sell it to you, but uh, it's not really useful because what you get there is, of course, you can get who has been checking your uh, profile and you can get 15 messages to people who are not on your network. But that is pretty much it, what you can get uh, out of it and also some features on uh, jobs section. But LinkedIn is also offering the 30 days free trial. So if you are having this uh, looking aggressively for the job or you are looking for something that uh, like, um, or you are, for example, promoting some kind of event or you have to have to get in contact with people who are not on your network, then use the free month, but uh, before the free month is over, take off your credit card details because it's, well, for the regular user, it's not really that useful. But it's still nice to see like even some people who have been there like checking my profile. So maybe there's something, someone interesting. So every now and then, if I happen to see that someone has checked my profile and haven't, hasn't been sending me connect requests, sometimes I go there and click like, like connect. Hey, so nice that you were on my profile. Should we connect? What is like, uh, what is your interest? What is your, what your upcoming goals? Can I help you somehow? But yeah, so you can see how many people have been checking your profile, which is kind of nice to see that uh, is your profile really interesting? Is the, is like the first sentence is really interesting. But what is really showing how your profile is optimized is in how many searches you appear. So this number here should be more than I have here now, but it's still quite okay, it's almost 200 in like week, so people can really find me on LinkedIn from the search, the people who are not yet on my uh, connection connections. I can see who have been looking for me. I can also see what they have been doing. So if I have the goal that I want to find a job, or then I can see are these people really in my target audience? Am I really interesting to target audience? Can they find me? So this is, these are some stats that you should be checking when you are optimizing your profile. And the good thing in optimizing your profile that you can do it always, you, you can like try it out, is it working like this? And if not, you can uh, check, like uh, change some things and see after one week, what are the stats? And then there's a, if you w write an article, you can also see that who has been reading it. 
what they, where they have been working, uh, where, they, where they came from, and what kind of title they have, and where from exactly. Like uh, the latest article that I wrote has a bit more than 250 views, and then most of them have been from Helsinki area, some of them from Oulu area, as those are the areas where I have the biggest network. So just like, uh, uh, like reading a bit about the numbers. And the same is also for the posts. You can see how many post views there has been, how many times your post has appeared in someone's feed. So my post has been viewed 7,000 times. And there has been 23 people from trainer's house. So most likely someone from trainer's house has commented on my post. And someone from OP, because I know people from OP and maybe some of them was commenting to my post. And also the same, who, where they, uh, what are their positions and uh, geographically where they come from. So depending on who is commenting on your post depends to who other people it is al also showing. And then there is also social selling index. It's mainly a tool for salespersons, but anyone can track their, act, like their effectiveness of their actions on LinkedIn by this. And you can find it from the, uh, this address, linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI. One year ago, I had this number, something like 40, and then I took some actions, I created my network, I posted things, and then I have got it up to 70. So it's uh, just like uh, something that you can uh, track yourself, like uh, how are you doing, like with the LinkedIn. So then, about job hunting. As I said, that there is a tab for only for jobs. You can look for jobs uh, by the title, or you can only put there something like a geographically. And here is an example when I was looking for jobs in Tampere. So this is a, like as the first one, in Nokia in Tampere is uh, looking for a trainee. So they are posting there also the co big corporations, SME companies, and also startups, everyone and there is also some uh, public sector is posting some jobs to LinkedIn. Because why not to, like, it's a very good way to get audience for the jobs. And then there is uh, the job results. They are re sorted to relevance for me. So how these things are, and like, it could be a match for me. And then they show how many people have applied through LinkedIn. So you know how much there is competition. So if there's like something like 100, you know that there's like a not so big chance to get po like a ranked well. And then a bit about more about company, how many people there is working, how big company it is. But I bet like most of people know already like what is Nokia and what kind of company it is but if it's something that you don't already know. So you know if it's like resonating, what kind of job would you want to have? And you then, it also tells, do you have connections working there? Like I know five people who are working with Nokia, so then I would like um, connect with them and say, or maybe ask, like hey, is there like um, about the position? or then I can ask, hey, can you introduce me to one of your like, uh, HR persons? Or can you please uh, tell me more about the team that I would be working with or like, yeah. Or can you recommend me to, your, to, to my possible future boss? 
So that is one way you can how you can benefit the network on LinkedIn. And here it also shows like when the post, uh, like when the job has been posted. It was two weeks ago. It has been viewed 36 times, but there is only one applicant. So then you can see like how interesting this is for others. Well, and also of course the job descriptions. Some, some of them like because you can set skills on your LinkedIn profile, like um, for example marketing, sales, and uh, all the um, software where that you can use. And some of these uh, job applications they have they state also the skills that you need to have, and then it tells you that you match five skills out of eight, or zero out of three, or 11 out of 11. So it tends you like immediately, is it really the job, is the job really for you and should you apply? And then there is also the, who has been in the posting the job, the HR person. So you can check what kind of people is, is she or he. So, and you can maybe contact with them. I'm really much encouraging you to get in contact with people because it's so much better that if the HR person who is checking the applications, that he or she has already an idea that about your name and face. It's like, oh, okay, this was the person who was having like really good question and he, he or she was already taking like a, in contact. So it's more likely that you get shortlisted. not only about geographical or um, geographical search for the jobs, but there's a lot of different kind of filters. But if you don't find the perfect fit for your job that you want to have, after applying all these filters, you can put a job alert on with your search. So then you can decide, is it like daily based or, we or weekly based when they are the sending you notification or email about the jobs that are out there. So you can be early applicant. So it's like giving, so you don't need to always be like checking, like searching every day, but the search alert is doing it for you. And uh, as I said, you can apply with your LinkedIn profile. You can add that to your LinkedIn profile to your C, uh, application, but you can also use it only for applying with the easy apply. So you just click there, like easy apply, put something, uh, put your email on and click apply. And then there was job application. So easy way. And then there's a lot of hidden jobs that never get to open positions. So maybe people are just uh, posting about, hey, we are in need of this kind of person. Or they are just asking from their networks that, hey, do you know anyone with this kind of skill set? And those, like, uh, you can't find those from Google. So those you can find only through your networks, which is why I highly recommend you to widen your networks also outside of your industry, also outside of your workplace, also outside of your university. And this is uh, Puria, is uh, a startup, has a startup here in Helsinki and uh, they were looking for a 3D software developer. So he has been there shouting it. And if, uh, like if I wouldn't have Puria on my network, I wouldn't have like even seen this. So, and for this kind of post, if he would be asking it, like, hey, 
recommend me someone if you know or tag person someone. So then the he might maybe had have like uh, gotten some comments, but now there's only 17 likes. But this is also because he has a link there. So the visibility might not be that good. But if you're looking for an internship place or you're looking for a job or you're looking for like more leads for your, uh, when you are selling something, make it public. Make a post about, uh, hey, this is me and I have this kind of skills. I know how to make uh, presentations. I know how to write a good blog post. And I know this and this and this kind of stuff, whatever, whatever it is. Or I know how to manage project well, very well. Exactly tell what you can do, not only about uh, what is the, your title and uh, what, is like, uh, what is the degree that you have had. So tell about what you can do and then tell that you are looking for something. Hey, please, can you share this post? And hey, do you, if you happen to know anyone, can you recommend or can you put me in contact with someone? So that's the call to action and that's, that's how you can reach these hidden jobs. And as I said about these groups, here are the three biggest groups for sharing jobs in Finland. And here is the, the last one, the, the bottom one, Talentful Finland. It's totally in English and there's also people from other places, but you cannot find it through LinkedIn search. You have to know the URL, which is here, www.talentfulfinland.fi. So I highly recommend you to the um, request to connect there. So if there's in your profile something that uh, shows that you are connected to Finland, then they're gonna add you. And then these Uratarpit, uh, it's mostly in Finnish, but there is like people who are posting about the uh, open positions and uh, tips how to get a job. And then there is e-jobs, jobs in Finland. And these two, uh, uh, two ones you can find from the search from LinkedIn. And that was the training part, showing uh, characteristics of LinkedIn. And then there's the workshop part where I, can, I give you more detailed tips, what you should write and how, what kind of process through what you can write on your headline and summary and also I give you personal tips, what you can write there and exactly how to showcase your competences. And thank you for this. Thank you, Rika. From this part, I'll be using the uh, catch box for this. So do you think we should take like a little break between here? Yes. Maybe, maybe like 10 minutes? Yes. Okay, so we'll take a 10 minute break. Break, And for those of you who have uh, signed up for the workshop, we'll be continuing in, in the room K21, uh, K213. So it's when you go through the doors and then turn left through the glass doors and then it's on the right of the room. And we'll be at the door checking those who have attended to it. And we'll be, if you want to, you can stay here if you haven't signed up for it or gotten the confirmation email. So you can come and we can check if you, there's more room for, the, for you there. So thank you for this part for everybody. Yes? So question, can, you, can they have these presentation slides? Yes, I actually do, but can I share them with them? Okay, so I will be sending to, the, to you the slides to everybody who have signed up. Yes. Okay, so we'll continue in 10 minutes. Uh, it's K213. Yes. <laughs>